them come. This is their fate. All right. All right. Welcome back to the House of Wolves podcast. I mean, my Birdman hands. <laughs> I'm saying paper hands. Uh, this is the, I don't even know what episode. Is this is 84. Might be 84, guys. You might, I might have to double check that. But episode of many today and we're going to be talking about a few things gaming wise of course as usual uh but before we get started still don't have my music i'm going to get it at some point get that all squared away for everyone um we are now on rss.com and not buzzsprout so if you were looking for our website on um buzzsprout is no longer there and i have to get all my information updated which like i said I'm not doing the greatest at managing this thing, but we're, we're, we're managing. Um, but yeah, find us on RSS.com. They were cheaper. Anywho, Josh, Jalen, talk to the people. What you've been up to? What you've been doing? What you've been playing? What's going on? Well, games, games. A lot of, a lot of really good games coming out <laughs> recently. Uh, Really good game. Amazing performance. <laughs> cinematic 30 FPS. Um, 30. Sometimes cinematic 20 FPS. Valid, valid. EA game on uh, PC. Uh, <laughs> but no, I've been trying to catch up. This this spring has been a lot of game releases, and uh, a lot of them I haven't been able to keep up with. I haven't played Dead Space Remake yet, and uh i haven't played jedi yet um which was actually good because i was thinking about buying it but it seems it's not a good well i mean you might have a different experience deontay because you played on console but for me at least on pc there's been a lot of bad pc game releases and uh fall no jedi survivor was unfortunately one of the worst ones <laughs> on pc uh, like, like you got the strongest system and barely getting 30 fps uh so that's not good you gotta wait on that um otherwise still going through resident evil games um i finished resident evil 4 remake uh, a few days ago um i enjoyed it it was a good game well made only 60 dollars it's not my favorite uh, Resident Evil, <laughs> and I, I, I think the game quality, the game quality, like boss fights and game, gunplay and stuff like that, is an improvement from the original. But I think I like the original more because it just felt more memorable to me, like mm-hmm. the the cutscenes, stuff the characters do, and stuff like that, and. You know, they changed it. It's more modern, more serious. The writing is less cheesy. But I think that's kind of what made, for me at least, because I only played Resident Evil 4 recently, um, that made it stand out among the other Resident Evil games where it's like your character, he can do, do all this cool stuff. But he's also kind of goofy, kind of like um, Dante from uh, Don't May Cry. Whereas this one, he's kind of really serious and kind of, I feel like Leon is too boring. In my opinion, in this game, I mean, gameplay wise, he's great. Like character wise, I didn't get anything from him. So, anyways, I think the game is still really good, and I I'm still gonna go through it again on I guess professional because I played it on hardcore and that wasn't too difficult. But I'm not like I'm very familiar with Resident Evil games now, mm. so professional will probably push me to be even more like stringent with like my ammo and stuff like that. That's interesting. That's another. That's a. That's an interesting topic. Um, but we're gonna move on because we don't want the intro to be super super long. Jalen, outside of watching Dragon Ball Z O episodes, what you been up to? Man, uh, Chili in shambles or something. Actually, no, I ain't talking to you, so I don't even know. <laughs> that's like, that's a valid question. You good? You good at these squeaks? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm good for now. For now. What I do I have to? I went to uh, Ghost Graduation. Mm-hmm. 
open house this past weekend. So, man, it's cool. And then I just wrapped up my last day at this job uh, today. But other than that, I mean, I don't even think I cut my PS5 on. I mean, it's been a rest mode instead of taking the power out, that type of stuff. But I haven't cut my PS5 on. I don't think I turned anything else on. It's like the week, man, kind of busy. But I ain't been doing too much of anything from back. I've definitely been watching Dragon Ball Z. I'm on uh, episode 92. Um, but, yeah, no, there ain't been a whole lot going on my way, so. You, well, you gonna watch been, all the Dragon Ball Z or you gonna stop at uh, when the Blue Saga start? I might stop at the Blue Saga, but I'm just kind of, yeah, I'm a little mad because they don't got Bruce Falcon or whatever that dude name is, music on here. They got all the dun 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 music and stuff like that, but I want to hear the all the little instruments from Bruce Holland and stuff. So. Oh, ain't but, it? Ain't it like a well? You might have to look for it, but ain't it like a fan made version where they mix the music with the voices, like the original voices? Maybe. Um, I got all the original episodes. I just don't know. It'd be good if they did Kai and then put mm-hmm. all the um the Bruce Falconer music or whatever, but they, that him and Funimation got into it, so I don't think they, that don't exist mm-hmm. no more. Yeah, oh, I think it's God. like a fan mix of it, but, uh, you know, you have to like find it somewhere. But yeah, that, it makes sense. Interesting. So somebody got into a few with Funimation and um, they were original like composers of Dragon Ball Z or something? Well, I thought well, Falconer was the original voice actor, right? Like, no, nah, he's the he's the the Japanese Dragon Ball Z got a lot of the dun 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 music like that you hear like in Dragon Ball type, mm-hmm. but all the little all the cold music since like have you ever he said tell me like you know just all that type of stuff like the iconic stuff like the Vegeta theme and uh-huh. the Trunks theme all those sorts of themes and stuff like that like Gohan's Rage, all that stuff is Falconer. But when it first came over here, those that was uh like the dub, that was they was playing Bruce Faulkner, so mm-hmm. so if you go back and watch the actual Dragon Ball Z and stuff like that, it don't have a lot of that any of that music, so it's kind of lame. And if you play Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, it uses a lot of the original music versus that game would have been way harder if it used the Faulkner music. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's kind of lame. But yeah, not that. Yeah, because the way you remember Dragon Ball Z is Faulkner music more than likely. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't even know uh, that. Yeah, but uh, yeah, Dragon Ball Z got a bunch of weird music stuff because, like, I know the the Bardock movie because I remember watching it when I was a kid and I liked it. But then when I watched it later with like the re-release or something, they changed the music. But I guess that was the original Japanese the, music that they changed. Yeah. What all the rock music? Yeah, it was because I know it's one. It's like Silent Scouter or something like that. Which I like that song, but it's more like '80s, like mm. uh, kind of like pop music. But I mean, it, it fits. But then the American version has completely different music. So, and it changes like the whole tone of the um, the movie. So. <laughs> yeah, one of some of be having a little rock music. Like, yeah, like, oh, no, no. like, be like <laughs> <laughs> you boy, bro, like bro, we just beating them up, and you just hearing all this like screaming and rock music and like borderline metal type stuff like that's interesting i didn't know that um so i mean yeah i mean you're doing something you know you're watching dragon ball z i know you've been more social so you mean if you ain't ain't playing the game you're probably just being more social somewhere else that's and that's uh totally fine actually that's the better choice um but yeah all right well i've been you know, sticking to my habits, trying to stay um, active. I what am I day? I don't even know. Monday would be day fourteen of out of a hundred um, of doing the the mile a day for a hundred days. Um, but Black I've been doing excellence. that. Yeah, I've been um, doing that. I bought um, I bought Star Wars. Um, and I've just been playing the first like 45 minutes of that. That's really, that really, that like is going to be a really fun game to play and get through. Um, mm-hmm. They 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 did a lot of the good stuff there. 
I uh, play Redfall, you know, um, which we're going to talk about. I played, um, you know, I mean, I play, you know, exclusives everywhere, right? You know, I play some stuff outside of everything, and I'm enjoying myself, but it's, it's plenty of good games out there. There's plenty of games that, um, that to play, but I think the most I've been playing really is just Resident Evil 4, I've been playing Hogwarts Legacy, I've been trying to like really get through my list before the big stuff started dropping, and um, I don't know, it might be tough, because I'm still trying to do YouTube videos, still trying to do other stuff, and you know, got family and a job, so... Um, so a lot of stuff I gotta try to get through, but I'm I'm, I'm pasting away, or at least I'm I'm um, I'm taking away at it a little bit, if that's the right word, taking. Uh, but yeah, that's all I've been doing: playing mm-hmm. games, setting up stuff, <laughs> trying to keep up with my fitness, trying to eat healthier, and um, yeah, it's a lot of lot of a lot of changes uh, going on around here, but they're all good. They're all good changes. Yeah, that's good. And it's you. Uh, how many more weeks or months you got into the actual like event for that you've been training for? Oh, that the first one is in June. That's the mile run, and then September is the uh, 10k. I think it's okay. September, or it might be August. September or August. Because it's either vice versa. It's either the marath- the rel- relay marathon is in August or it's in September. And then the 10K is in uh, August or September. So it's, it's, it's either, you know, either one, either way. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, those are the things I'm training for. Um, the 10K is probably going to be the worst, honestly, because mm-hmm. I am not an endurance runner. And I'm trying to get there. But um, my endurance is fatal. It's trash. Um, so just take it easy on them, them ankles. Don't yeah, uh, yeah, the <laughs> ankles are good. The knee, the um, shins are good now. It's probably just because of uh, repetition and just running on them, and got my new balances mm-hmm. um, that I really don't like to wear, but they the best, yeah. best comfortable you know, fit shoe I own. Um, you stop running in those Jordans. <laughs> yeah, I had to stop running in those. Those were not working <laughs> um but it wasn't i think it was i just had some some regular i had some what's the prestos i think i had some nike prestos those are not great running shoes um even if they are running shoes you need some real ones to go to new balance um, they, they know how to do a foot so <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah they not look they might not look the best but they know what they doing yeah and there's no wonder they are the most popular dad shoe. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all I've been doing. I ain't been really doing much, but I got a podcast to run. So we got to talk about some games. Obviously, I've been keeping up with the news. That's that's pretty much my every day. So we got a lot to talk about, a lot of stuff going on. And uh, we're going to get into it now. Uh, but first things first, Redfall. <laughs> redfall, Redfall, Redfall. Where can we start? You suck. I and mean, that's pretty much all you really got to say on it. It's not like you got to go into a whole, you know, you know, you don't have to do an essay on it. It's a bad game. It feels like like the biggest like misstep I've ever seen in like a very long time from a company. Um, this is almost as bad as you might as well just canceled it like like they did Scalebound like. I would have rather you just cancel this mm-hmm. game. This game sucks, and it's like a big blemish on your ability to do anything right. Um, and it's Bethesda. I mean, I knew they was scamming Microsoft with that $8 billion. This just confirmed that they were scamming them. So my mm-hmm. theory is that this was a filler portfolio thing where they literally just forced them to make a game, and they demoed it really well. And that's pretty much what how they sold the acquisition, and they positioned themselves at this big company with great games coming out. I'm not saying that Arcane can't make a great game. I'm saying that this wasn't the game. This was a portfolio filler that they literally pushed out for them to to, to subject or to showcase 
to Microsoft as if they had Starfield, this game, blah, blah, blah. This is what I feel like happened. They demoed it well because with the marketing and the tools that they do, they could probably sell an arcane story-driven fourth co-op shooter to Microsoft as a big next thing. Um, I'm not saying like it's going to push up the 500 million or whatever, but it just shows that they have a portfolio of games on the on already and that this might help boost a portfolio. Um, I feel like there was a few of those and this one just happened to come out first. So Redfall obviously was a shell of a game. Truly. Um, there is really not much to design. There's really not much to story. There's really not much to loot systems. The mechanics are busted. Everything is really like, just a really overall bad game. How do you go from Prey and all of those other games to that? If you scamming, <laughs> you can. If you scamming and nobody's going to really pay attention, I mean, come on now. That's all I can think of. It's like we scamming. We got to get. We got to. We got to put something out for them to you know feel like we met our quota. They're not really overseeing. They're not putting pressure on us. They're letting us run like we normally did. And we got Big Brother behind us, so we don't really care if we fail. Why not continue to scam? So, honestly, that is my opinion. It's not like the facts, but I feel like down the line, it's going to come out that this was probably one of those games that was just there to be there to showcase that they had games on the ready when truly... Like, a sell, that's a selling point to me. A selling point is that it's an arcane studio game when they come off like Dishonored, Prey, and they do Deathloop. These are the games that you want to purchase and have. PlayStation was smart. They said, we're going we gonna, to we gonna actually vet the game, Deathloop. Oh, it looks like a good game. We'll take it for exclusivity for a year. But we sh for sure ain't buying y'all for $8 because low-key y'all suck. And, I mean, I feel like Microsoft was the dummy in the situation i guess i'm not saying that they don't have good technology there and they don't have workers that make games i'm saying that this was a poor purchase and it shows with redfall and redfall just kind of solidifies my thought when they first did it that this was a really bad purchase so when we're going to talk about it too how does that impact feel how does that impact the microsoft brand but right now let's can stay on focused on redfall and redfall and this whole in, in, in you know totality is a sh really really bad game, and that's all I can say about it. I mean, I will never give it more time on my day. I, I gave it an hour, like I said I was, and from the lack of introduction to powers, the lack of introduction to characters, the lack of introduction to a villain, they truly are vesting all their their ability on the world and it's bland and empty so i like the colors i mean i i can say that they it sometimes the, the i can say that the world and places look different and distinct in a way like they have a they have a uh a, a coordinated scheme or i would call it but i mean i really don't have much praise about this game uh I ain't got much more talk in me anyway. But this game here, bad for business. Um, and, yeah. I just, I, I just, I would, I don't want to buy a Bethesda game ever. Like, I never do. <laughs> I never did. And, um, you know, that's pretty much it. So, um, yeah. I, um, I mean, like, I agree that this was a bad business deal. They were probably banking on they would get one really big name IP, which is Elder Scrolls, and like you know whatever they come out with with that, it's gonna sell numbers. And then two, Bethesda probably said, "Here we got six, seven games that's all ready to come out in the next two years, and like that is gonna be good for marketing. It's gonna be good for Game Pass, and so." Microsoft took it as a deal because, I mean, Bethesda is a big company and not, you can't, I guess, there are not a lot of companies that could have, like, you know, seven games already come out within two years. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if those seven games are not um, good, 
And if half of those are even bad, then it's not even worth how many games you put out. Just put out one really good game, you know, every couple months. That's better than one good game and then three bad games. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. Like business-wise, I'm not a businessman, but this seems like a a bad purchase, a bad investment from them. Uh, and they're gonna have to do a lot to like, I guess, pull it together. Um, honestly, I don't even want to see Starfield this year. Like from their previews, it did not look good already or like fully fleshed out. Um, and with already the bad press for Redfall, I don't think it, Microsoft can afford any more L's this year. So just put it on hold <laughs> until it's it's good. Uh, as for Redfall itself, um, yeah, I played about two hours. I played about an hour on the Series X and PC. The Series X felt really bad right away. Um, the game overall feels really unpolished, like they didn't have any budget for this, and I don't know why that's the case. But it feels like they didn't have any money. Uh, the cutscenes are all comic book screens. Um, it's a, but it's, the comic book screens aren't even telling the story. They're just showing you different stills of the world. Like, here's the beach. Here's the town hall. Here's the movie theater. And it's like, you're not telling the story even with the limited amount of stuff you got there. Um, it runs at 30 FPS on a console. But it's also super input lag heavy with that 30 FPS. That's probably because of the motion blur. Um, I end up watching a video and like... Uh, you you like you know turn off the motion blur and stuff like that. But at that point, I didn't care about playing it on console. It felt bad and I didn't like it. Uh, yeah. The guns didn't feel that good either. Um, but I I just tried it on PC anyways, uh, and it felt honestly it felt a lot better. It ran at 60 for me at least. I you know I got a pretty modern PC. Um, the movement and the gunplay felt a little bit better because I guess the input lag was was less. Um, and like I said, color wise, the world looks interesting. I think the actual town of Redfall is like an interesting setting, but it just felt so empty. Like I was um, just running into story missions. Like okay, it wants me to go to the the pier, so I'm gonna run all the way over there through this neighborhood. I'm not gonna go into any houses because I already explored and the houses are pretty empty. It's like one vampire in each house. Mm -hmm. um it's like there's nothing going on in the open world like i tried it in the daytime and i tried it in the nighttime in the daytime it was like maybe you might see like some humans like looting a car but it's like two two humans out of this whole area and then at nighttime same thing it's like two vampires walking around where it's like even even though i didn't like dying light 2 dying light 2 it was zombies everywhere like it felt like the city was overrun by these monsters and Redfall doesn't feel like no, that. It does not. And so that, yeah, that hurts it a lot. Otherwise, yeah, it just feels like. Cause so I'll talk about the art. Um, cause like I follow a lot of game artists online to cause they talk about like how they make it and the effort and stuff like that and I think it's really interesting and cool to see that stuff. And the art I would say is the biggest disappointment for me because art that. Uh, stylized art wise um i think arcane looks really good like uh death loop looked very interesting with like the colors and designs and stuff like that same thing even though it's not the same studio but like ghostwire tokyo had a strong art direction so i feel like at least over bethesda there are a lot of people that know what they're doing art style wise but this game it just feels like none of those people were available <laughs> or something it's like the the city looks interesting but if you look at the the textures or the the assets the textures are all flat like inside the firehouse like the first area that you arrive at all of the especially on console but on pc too because i played it on high all the textures are uh flat textures which which mean you know just imagine a box and you put a texture on it and it's flat it's supposed to be a brick wall but the brick wall is flat. You can see the the red bricks and the you know the white um, lines in between the bricks, but it looks completely flat. Like this is just a wall with something painted on top of it. It's mm -hmm. not using any normal map information. And normal maps are just uh, tricks that you can use with flat textures 
to give it some depth. So if you look at it, no matter what angle you're looking at it, it's going to kind of rotate some of the pixels so that it looks like it has more depth to it. And it's like you're not even using normal maps. And this is a modern AAA game. It's like it's not like it's hard to do. Like this is basic texture work that even I know how to do. And it's like, why? what is the issue? Is it a streaming issue where you can't stream the textures fast enough because it's going to take your frame rate? But you shouldn't even be having that issue because there's not anything dynamic going on in the world or anything like that. So, nope. art-wise, for me, it's the biggest disappointment because I, I feel like even if the game was trash, it could still look good. Like, I don't know, Godfall or something. Like, people didn't like it. <laughs> but at least it was, like, fancy-looking game. Yeah. Um... So I don't know what they put the effort into. It seems like they tried to make a co-op game, but it wasn't working. There's no matchmaking in the game. You got to party up with your friend from the lobby, and they don't carry over their uh, mission save data. So it's like co-op is kind of pointless, and you play it single player, but there's nothing going on in the single player story. That like There's no story or characters that you care about. So... I don't know what the hell happened with this game. Um, they were jack this... That's what happened. <laughs> they were scammed. It's very simple. Like If you just look at it from that perspective, there is nothing else that makes sense. Like there is, This company can make a good game. Everything points to them just literally making a shell of a game to, to facilitate and, to, and to, to build up a portfolio. But this is garbage in it. And they knew it. Everybody knew it. They put the embargo date after launch because they didn't want reviews to come out beforehand. There are so many telltale signs of a bad game. But the fact that, you know, and that's where I want to kind of shift into feel the situation, which we can shift now because we kind of beat that. And I don't think, Jalen, did you try? Yeah, you said you didn't even start, start up anything. So Redfall is garbage. I mean, there's no there's no reason for anyone to ever try it. So there's no reason to continue to further uh, to talk about it outside of yeah. how it looks to feel. And now, honestly, what is going to happen? I would say with just him. go play Back for Blood if you want a mid like multiplayer game. <laughs> Back for Blood was a better experience, and we hated that game. Yep. So, Phil. Um. From my from my from where I'm sitting now, it tells me that one the the the, the level of of the level of stress or the level of micromanagement has to go up almost a hundred percent. Wherever it's at now, it's probably abysmal. If you're not double checking and verifying what types of games are getting published, not only are you not doing that, but you're not showcasing. You're not even. Sh you're you're positioning yourself to be, to be uh, hurt by the 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 labor and the 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 game and the output and the, the forethought of these companies now. Like you're the head honcho, all of Xbox. You have all these companies under you and all these different um, studios under you. There has to be some form of. Uh, understanding of how these games come to market there can't just be i'm gonna let you guys do the same thing you were doing over there because now they don't need to produce because you are the big brother what is what is causing them to truly showcase their skill set and what if it's not even the skill set of this the original arcane studios maybe it's not even them anymore maybe there was so much turnover that this game does not even represent a true arcane game maybe it's just got the arcane name and that's fine too but the, what that tells me is is that these games being positioned as these types of companies should not be which one that's that's one main major thing and two it just tells me that the ship has not been right it's basically still out to sea and dangling on by for for dear life because it's literally um it's literally like 
freaking Xbox. I, I, I don't want to go that far, but it's like Xbox One all over again to the point where no one has confidence in the company no more. You're staying the, 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 the good faith you re received over the last few years, and now everybody's judging it based off this thing like that nobody's going to be thinking about her forza horizon 5 nobody's thinking about um halo infinite right now nobody's thinking about uh even freaking hi-fi rush the game that came out on this platform not too long ago because everybody's being everybody's being pushed to believe the narrative of bethesda is out here playing and you accepting it and you're just allowing it to go through you're talking about how these games are um, everybody's looking forward to it. They're going to be great games. And then they come out and they look like this. That tells me we have zero confidence in Starfield. We have zero confidence in anything coming out of Bethesda. Maybe there's hope for the um, Acquire Studios that did not, you know, come from this. But this is $8 billion. This is, this is a company that's supposed to have a, a, at least a track record of doing something. Um, I, I wouldn't even call it. I mean, it's borderline good games that most of most of their games to me are borderline good games. They're not like great, but they're also they're all borderline ish. Um, and they, they make those types of games outside of like Doom and like those outliers. There is some 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 grace there. But overall, yeah, I'm not that too impressed by Bethesda games. But for you guys not to put like some type of like management in place, some type of some type of overview or some type of review of anything because this this doesn't this this doesn't come out like if anybody played this this does not come out how does it come out how does the group test how does all this how does it all get done to come out i like i said I, and i and i stand by it they got scammed they still need a game to come out because shareholders are looking for a game. You can't just keep pushing off games. Obviously, what happened last year, you had 30% tank. We got Now we got to pretend like these games are actually good, and we got to put it out, even though it sucked. So he had, they had to get on board with the garbage that was presented to them, which that's what it feels like to me. It, it, like I said, I don't think people are out to make bad games, and I don't think that's something that you mean they possibly could be. I mean, Phil could possibly be in on the whole thing. He possibly could be in the back laughing, laughing because he got his money. He got what we needed at least for day one, and now nobody cares about that. But honestly, there was no mentally. There's no real reason to do that because a cash, a churn and burn never works out, and he knew that and that's kind of why he started to, to build the building blocks for it knows that just trying to cash in on a success of one thing is not the not the way to go so it it feels like it goes against every type of philosophy he has ever said about gaming on xbox it feels like everything about it is just broken right so when i think about phil's position i feel as if he had to take it on. He had to take. He had to take the brunt of it. But you, at the end of the day, are the individual that are is supposed to kind of right the ship, and you dropped the ball. So I blame you still. I blame you for allowing it to still come out. But I mean, I don't. Only thing I can give him grace in is because uh, they kind of tricked everyone. I mean that's what they kind of did i mean they tricked they tricked microsoft they tricked the viewers they tricked everyone and i'm not saying that you know xbox didn't have a part in that they were pretending like this game was complete wasn't buggy and actually had a good decent story when none of that is true none of the fights are interesting none of the gameplay is fun so i'm not saying that everybody didn't have a hand in i feel like they just had to deal with the dark hill the cards they were dealt and I think a lot of changes are going to happen to Bethesda. Maybe even where they they start to break up some studios. I don't I don't see them allowing Arcane to continue on as if nothing happened. I don't see them letting other games that are now in the in the development cycle to just not be, you know, reviewed extensively for errors issues bugs because 
this is a first party game. This is their legacy and it's kind of like really, really much so tarnished. It's not like a Nintendo where you're like, oh, we don't find it to be that valuable. It's an okay game, but we don't find the value in that game. This is just a straight up broken game. This is like, we tried to get $70 out of you for a really legitimately broken game that does not work, does not do all the features that it's supposed to be at launch. And most of the time it does not work in the way that we are meant we meant for it to work. Like it doesn't feel right because the controller setup is, is wonky. It doesn't play right because the en enemies don't even spawn in. Their AI is broken. Um, there is not much when it comes to world building and we just paste something together. And honestly, indie games truly do have more substance than this. That is that is that is like a, a thing they have to deal with now. Phil has to deal with that. Um, and for him to let it come out just tells me either there's plenty of pressure on him to kind of produce, and there's plenty of pressure on um, Bethesda to stop playing around. So. And they had to put out something, so it tarnished everything. Everything about it. It's not like it's um, like like they can't separate. Can't separate the two. They they're together now. Bethesda and Microsoft are together. Bethesda is a product of an acquisition, and honestly, I just think Redfall was was exactly that. Just some garbage that they had to put out because it was a part of the acquisition, and. Yeah, I mean, there's not much else to it. Uh, I I don't think I don't find Bungie's next game that's is gonna ever come out in this state. Sony just wouldn't do it, um, ever. So there's like a, there's a lot of yeah. faith that they just lost and a lot of people and um and I don't I don't think the cash grab was worth it. So we'll see. We'll see where it goes. But what are your thoughts on Big Philly? Um, I don't know. Like, like I said, as a public presence, he seems like a cool dude. Seems to to like games. Um, but mm -hmm. whatever is going on management wise at Microsoft doesn't make sense. They've been struggling for a while, and I feel like they've been trying to dig themselves out of that hole, out of a hole to catch up. Mm -hmm. Um, but now, it I don't know. It feels like they they can't, or they're really struggling to still get out the hole. Um, yeah. And yeah, I don't, I don't know what what the cause is because it's not. I mean, there are other companies that have issues like Ubisoft and EA. They all have issues and they drop like buggy games. But like you said, with like Sony, they would have never let this game come out. Um, it would have been canceled yeah. or it would have been delayed forever, and then it would have became a different game completely yeah. or something like that. And it's like I I don't know. Who thought this was a good idea? And maybe I don't know. Maybe it's just the Microsoft culture where it's like they would, like overall, they could release a product. For example, I don't know a, a Windows update that's not fully complete and then improve on it over, over time. And their goal is just to get it out the door. Whereas, like, I don't think that really works for games, especially because like this is going to hurt the brand. And pretty much anybody that's with Xbox right now it's it's kind of like they're banking on goodwill that it's gonna get better <laughs> no nah. so far they haven't delivered anything that uh justifies it no nah, that's that's the that's the problem and um i think it's gonna get worse before it gets better i think starfield's gonna come down the line it's gonna be some crap um to be honest and maybe yeah and year. honestly if it's not good like like i said I don't think they should come out with Starfield this year. I don't think it's ready. It can use the extra year, and it will be much better for it. Um, I mean, maybe it needs even more than a year, but, like, whatever they have, I would say, like, if there's another game like Redfall where it's, like, having issues, they really need to sit down and think about, can we actually fix these issues, or should we scrap this game completely and have them start on something else? Like, we take Arcane, put them to a new studio, or have Arcane focus on a single-player game. Like, whatever resources they put towards Deathloop obviously probably took away from Redfall, and Redfall never got the care that it needed, so it should have just been canceled. <laughs> 
and let's not all let's not forget money doesn't always help um they can buy activision all they want they can still get some duds like they truly need to put in the time like truly put in the time i don't know if they need to have someone from playground games and coalition go around to all the other studios and really talk to them how they create games and how they try to position themselves to be the best foot forward at the beginning of the cycle i mean i don't i'm not saying that they everything that they do is perfect i'm saying that at least when they when they when they deliver a product it works <laughs> and it's not like in this state i'm not saying that bethesda has never delivered a game that was great and worked i love death loop i'm just saying that there is a big eye on microsoft and bethesda and this company and there is no time to be cash grabbing anything when you have zelda coming out and you have freaking like i think was spider-man coming out at the end of the year you got mm-hmm. final fantasy 16 coming out and that's a playstation 5 exclusive like you're gonna drop even significantly like this is not a time to just be throwing stuff to the wind you don't have any wins right now you have to dig deep and you have to come out with something worthwhile and trust me flashing fable ain't gonna do it flashing perfect dark ain't gonna do it these games aren't it i'm sorry but you guys i don't know i i there's something about you know there's something about there's something to be said about western game truly like i mean there is studios out there but they are too far in between and that tells me a lot about western gaming that it it's really not there as in like like the ability to produce in a in a high quality level at a high level it's just Mm -hmm. there's something to be said that there's only a few out there that can do it that tells me that this the industry in itself is busted um there's not enough there's not enough money in the world. Like, even that. I feel like there's something in the sauce over there and something in the sauce about, you know, non-Western gaming, like, that truly shines, that just, I don't know, maybe they're more passionate about it. I think people go up, and they could be either working on Microsoft Word or a video game, and they don't really care. The difference. <laughs> like, that's how I feel that they're about their coders, about everything. Like, they don't, like, there's, like, zero passion behind it, which is fine. And the studios can, I mean, that's not fine, but it's, like, some people just have to do a day job. Some people just got into a business, but, and they, they didn't think it was going to be what they want. So now it's something else, and they don't enjoy it. Um, and it's well, not one like thing I know vision. about western gaming versus japan or other places is there is a lot of turnover and not necessarily and and because the studio is bad but like once people finish the last of us a lot of them move on to something else now they're on horizon or something like that which can be good because you have a lot of people with expertise going from one project to the next but also that that means that the people left behind um kind of what they they call it like you losing like there's no transfer of knowledge or something like that because you have so much turnover. Mm. Uh, Microsoft is the same thing. They let go a bunch of people from E from three four three, and even before that, people came and left three four three so many times that people were like, "We don't know how to use this engine," and the people that know, knew how to use it left. <laughs> and so we gotta learn how to use it before we can do anything with it. And yeah. I think that's a big issue for Microsoft and seeing sony has gone through that as well but they were able to like unify their development style at least i feel like the people always complain that every game they make is just uncharted but i feel like if the bones of all their games start with uncharted then it makes it easier to branch off from there Uh, so if there's ever going to be any any change in microsoft they're going to need to do something about their development between all their studios there's no reason that playground games and coalition should be like super good and nobody else uses those same techniques um like that doesn't make sense 
Nope. And, like the and, coalition works on like games that are third party and like stuff that's not even from Microsoft just because they're so talented. And it's like, why is your best studio playing like backup for third parties? <laughs> Listen, I have no idea what 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 is going on over there on the at the top level it is like i said because phil is at the top it's phil's fault i like phil but it's phil's fault he has to figure out a way to unify this big large company because i don't feel like there's any unity there's supposed to be a lot of ideas being shared and i don't think that's happening either I, I do I do feel good about Hi-Fi Rush Hi-Fi Rush being delivered and actually playable and really worked well day one. I feel good about that, but I feel good at, I want to feel good that there is leadership in place that is going to hold their studios accountable. And I'm nervous that this is going to just be another thing like, well, you know, it happened, but we we still have faith in you got whatever the case may be. I don't know. Maybe they get fired. Maybe all maybe all full of arcane just is just like let go because of this. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think something may something may be more of a, a maybe maybe dissolved into other comp and other studios or something like that. But there is a lot of history at our arcane, so I don't know if that is the selling point of why they allowed them to do have so much freedom here. Um, but whatever it is, whatever they thought they could do, they can't do it. Um, Phil needs to, I'm not, not, not literally, but he, it just needs to be more of some micromanagement and needs to really be some due diligence behind what they're doing and, and how they're delivering their game and deliverables. It just seemed like none of this stuff was like, there's no, there's no yeah. way, there's nothing that tells me this game shouldn't be 60 FPS at launch. Nothing, nothing. Like yeah, everything it's, else it's is broken. <laughs> What is the? I I really don't get it. Everything is broken. Like, is that what's going to tip the the it over if it was running at fifty frames per second versus sixty? Like, nothing else could yeah. really make this game worse. Um, and, even and poor I, performance. So, personally, I'm tired of the excuse that no, thirty FPS is acceptable and it it's nothing to complain about because every time that's brought up. It's an excuse for a game that doesn't run well. Like we have yet to see, I, I say at, at all this generation, we haven't seen a 30 FPS game that is should be 30 FPS. Like it looks good, it runs well at 30 FPS, mm -hmm. and there's no issues with it. Every 30 FPS only game is because the game runs trash and it's barely 30. So it for me that's just an excuse like yeah um to cover up poor technical performance and last thing i'll say about um xbox is that i don't i don't want to see any more multiplayer games from them uh the lat they haven't had any multiplayer hits like bleeding edge um the the pirate game the none of their multiplayer co-op games have been good and they need to stop <laughs> i feel like it's just a waste at this point yeah uh, focus on building your ips and making sure that they're good hmm. yep i mean it's just a lot of it's a lot of disappointment but it's 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 um i guess it's enough of phil and xbox and no more zombie says monster games but Nice. Yeah, man. <laughs> I don't know what the heck going on, dude. Dead Island Two came out in a better state than this so-called AAA IP junk trash. Um, so yeah, I mean that's pretty much it on Redfall. I feel like um, Microsoft is in a very bad spot. Um, they couldn't spend money to try to make themselves feel better about their poor, op poorly optimized, poorly ran game. So. Um, I hope they use that money to boost their services and truly um, do something about their gaming catalog because I'm not saying that they didn't just launch Minecraft Legends and people are enjoying it. I'm not saying that they didn't just launch Hi-Fi Rush and people are enjoying it. I'm just saying that there is value behind heavy hitters 
there is value behind strong IPs and there is value behind strong characterizations. There is literally none of that there outside of the very few and far between. It feels as if everyone's always reaching for something special to come from Microsoft and we just keep getting fed lemons. So that's the last thing I'm gonna say on it. Um, I really hope Phil bounces back and I hope the company bounces back, but right now I'm kind of going to be buying my SSD on PS5 and I'm going to be playing that mainly again because there is really no point in buying that, like messing around with the Xbox. <laughs> Because they got proprietary technology that's charging me extra that I don't want to pay. So, yeah, it's real bad over there. Um, Goodwill is slowly fading. And, you know, Sony ain't doing nothing special. All they're doing is putting out games. Good games. That's it. Nothing special. There's no fancy footwork there. There's nothing that they're doing that's exceptional. Truly nothing. And yet they're still... Busting y'all because simply they know how to make a game. So, how about you guys make a game? Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it on them. Um, I, I want to talk about two other things before we get up out of here. Uh, one of those being Jedi Survivor, um, another game that kind of launched in a poor state. But the good thing about this one is that it's actually a good game. At least it's been reviewing well. We have not played it fully through. I've played about 45 minutes. But from my experience, it has probably 70% <laughs> more value in the first 45 minutes I've played in the entirety of Redfall. So it is literally, in that bit bite size, it's got better animation, got better characters, got better um cinematics it has better sound design it has better features it has ray tracing and it actually hits its target frame rate right now because they got a patch because it wasn't before and um you know level design everything is just all all cylinders much better much better presentation i feel great playing that game and and, and it feels good to play that game so i guess I want to start with the problems though. The problem is is that everybody feels comfortable dropping off a terrible game at launch. And and I'm not saying that they wanted to because this wasn't the ones that had like the embargo thing. This is wasn't one of the ones that didn't own up uh to their mistake. Um literally there is radio silence over there at um Arcane. But at least Jedi knew that they had problems, put out positioning themselves to fix it, and stated that they were apologizing to us about the situation. But there is plenty of apologies that come. There's plenty of things like this that happen. Um, is this the new norm, Josh? Is this like... Uh, is this the new norm? Yeah, I think so. I mean, and it's probably just a management, like, business issue at the core of it, where it's like, we have to put it out and they probably have the numbers we're saying like bad performance reviews are actually not going to affect the sales that much or something like that so uh i i do think it's going to be more of a normal because mm -hmm. games are getting more they're getting more simplistic but their features like ray tracing are kind of really complex and take time to like uh optimize and stuff like that and mm -hmm. it just don't seem like companies yeah, or at least on the business side, companies don't care to to do that ahead of time. And I mean, you you know more about business than me, but like realistically, if it's like we can delay the game for six months and that's six months more of expenses or whatever that we got to worry about, or we can for put the game out now. Blah blah blah. You know, because they're yeah. probably gonna they're probably gonna probably let go some of some of them but i don't think all of them and i don't know how that uh, the gaming well the usually gaming how it cycle works. is interesting yeah usually how that works once the game is out not everybody's gonna be fired but people will at least be reassigned so if your team got 100 people and mm -hmm. the game comes out if y'all not playing the dlc or the dlc is um almost done as well that 100 can become 50 people and those other 50 people can go do something else 
Um, and especially with performance patches, like, yeah, we all can just work on a performance patch for the next six months. We saved half the our expenses because we have half the number of employees we need to play. And if y'all don't finish it or if it take a year, it don't matter because people already bought the game. <laughs> well... They still gotta absorb that cost elsewhere, but I get what you're saying. I mean, sure, but for the CEOs and like the managers, it's about your quarterly sales, so or whatever. Oh, so yeah. like the game came sure. out, we made a billion dollars, and then my job is done. I'm moving on to the next project. Long term, yeah. yeah, they gotta absorb absorb the cost like that, but it still looks good for business people to just put the game out and get the sales. It's not yeah, about the, the delays the aren't good, mm-hmm. and that's what's happened with Cyberpunk. They wanted to get that money before the, um, I think it was like the third, fourth quarter, I mean, the first quarter that was over with, or something mm-hmm. like that. So they still put that game out, and um, delays are costly. Delays are nothing more but um, you, you know you 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 you're, t- you're basically saying us to continue to front the bill. We had an expe- expected cost or budget for this entire game, and now we're going over budget because we have to do certain things. We have to make sure things are right. So you have to go back and talk to them about why this is important for them to do so and why we haven't delivered or, uh, i.e., sold their game yet. So that stuff makes sense, of course, and delays are, are delays, and um, having a few people or um, having having the ability to recuperate recoup, recoup some of those costs is important for business to continue to run they don't, obviously don't want to be over leveraged they don't want to have so much money out there i mean so much debt out there that they're, they're over leveraging the, the business and things like that there's like things that go into play of keeping the cash flow of a business going so yeah i, I get that part um but at the end of the day, there is so much value in the the goodwill of a business, the intangibles, the 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 ability to have people have faith in like your product and purchase and and I don't know. I just I just don't I don't I think that there's plenty to say about Santa Monica Studios. There's plenty to say about Naughty Dog. There's plenty to say about Guerrilla Games. There's plenty to say about Insomniac, which still I'm like i'm i'm kind of glad sony bought insomniac because i don't even think microsoft would have been the same insomniac to be honest i think it would have been no, something it totally wouldn't. different so i'm so glad that, that people that know how to make games and have resources actually purchased a company that really knew how to make something and do something well so um there 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 is an understanding there like there's probably a blame on the 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 studio but there's also a blame on the overhead and how they kind of run things because literally they have quotas they have things the deadlines to meet you cannot keep waving your hand up and say hey we need more time hey we need more time because we want to make a good game want to be great at it and we don't want you to feel like we got pressure to kind of deliver this in the right way um i i don't know i just don't feel that to be the case over there on um this on Sony's end, and if it is, they hide it very well, and they put there, and it's as, as if they, it doesn't exist. But um, I think there is just a lot of moving parts where the one can't, can't they share the blame really? I share the blame with the studio, and I share the blame with the company uh, overhead because they know what they have to do. They probably understand the state of it, and they still need to make that money. So, and then the studio. They still have to deliver something. They have to make it shippable, and maybe those other things come in come in after. Because once they figure out, okay, what is manageable, what can be shipped, and then they kind of come in and patch the rest. I don't like that that's the new norm, but I really think that that's going to truly be how we get get our games delivered. Unless you're like one of those studios that don't play any of those types of games, and truly mm-hmm. have the ability to stop and continue to get more time to really hone in and polish your game like unless you're one of those studios would have that good faith that we know we're going to deliver another billion dollar game like everybody isn't a billion dollar company everybody isn't like uh everybody doesn't make sales do sales of a billion dollars that like that's not that's not normal to think everybody can do that it's normal for everybody to be able to possess skill set 
to create a good game and that's not the norm now it's, it feels as if everything is being piecemealed and it feels like just like rapping that nothing's authentic nothing's really truly being created from the ground up in a, an original way everybody's working on something different and nobody has a real focus on the vision of the game because every third party I've been dealing with, every company we've been seeing, every game that's been coming out, there's been so many issues that tells me that there is something fundamentally wrong with the way our gaming industry is ran. Um, it's just a problem. So, um, but you know, the big three, the big, the big ones, the big companies that know how to make games and have been making them for a very long time and has cultivated a, a, a culture, um, they can probably get away with how this management stuff is ran and saying, hey, we need more time. Be quiet. So, I mean, I understand that the little guys probably don't have that time. So I get it. But um, I think it's a it's, it's both both parts to blame here. Um, lack of resources, maybe. But everybody got to meet their quota so um but yeah jedi survivor i i just i don't really i don't really want to keep um continue on but what i what i will say is that at least respawn has redeemed themselves in my eyes as in they are truly trying to fix a broken game right now at least on pc for sure it's broken but on uh, ps5 and xbox you can play it and they honestly, you could probably get through it and still enjoy it. But there are some few more patches coming down the line. They already released a patch for um, the PS5 and Xbox Series X, which is good. Um, I don't know how much of a change it's going to be yet until somebody actually does a review. But it seems as if they're going in the right direction and not the wrong. So truly good space there as well. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about and... We're gonna make it our final thing. It is the Armor Core. Take it away, Josh. I don't know nothing about this game. Armor outside core. of yeah, sorry. outside of, you know, from software made it. So <laughs> Yeah. Uh well yeah, they um came out with their basically media um press releases and stuff. They announced the game a couple months ago. Um, and now they're actually showing it off. Uh, the trailer I thought looked good. Um, basically, Armor Core is just gonna. So they they keep saying that it's not it's not a Souls game, and you shouldn't expect a Souls game. Um, what it is is a, a mech fighting game. You'll be able to customize your mech uh, more so. I guess more like a Gran Turismo, where you can change like the the core stuff, like the engine and how. It performs. You can change the legs to wheels, and that that completely changes how you move and what type of terrain you can go on and stuff like that. Um, so it's very fun to customize. Uh, and the main thing is that Armor Core is very fast. Like I don't really know how to describe that to y'all who haven't played it. Where it's like if you think of Dark Souls, those games are so place, but then you play something like Sekiro, and all the fights and especially the parrying happen like split second decisions and like it's very it's super fast paced and that made it very fun uh armor core is like that but in a lot of ways even more fast like mario Ooh. kart when you play it on like the what 250 cc's where the game is like really <laughs> speeding sp moving burn yeah they, they be burning with, yeah they be that's what speed armor core is like um and that's why people like it where you can have like a deep customization game and then go into pvp where it's super uh, fast. Um, honestly, it's not a lot to highlight from the media stuff. It's more stuff that I guess Armor Core fans would care about. Um, they're focusing more on the single player aspect of it because uh, their last game, Armor Core 5, was like a multiplayer type PvE PvP game and nobody liked it. So they're getting, going away from that, focus on the single player. Um, it's gonna have. They said. Um, and they're going to use all their knowledge from like their level design and stuff like that to make it interesting. It's still going to be mission based though. Um, so it's not going to be fully open world, but at least the level design should be better. What I will say that is different is that they're focusing a lot more on melee attacks uh, mm -hmm. instead of just shooting. Uh, and it seems like you will use like, you know, shoot rockets at somebody to like stun them and then dash in and then stab them or something with like your melee weapon to, uh, to kill them 
Uh, so that makes it a lot more interesting, kind of a mixture of what you would get, I guess, from a Souls game. Um, whereas that focuses only on like melee sometimes. Shooting, this game is more shooting with a little bit of melee. Uh, I mean, overall, I thought it looked really good. I don't think it's going to get people who's not, who don't like those type of games into it. But uh, I think it, it will be successful, at least um, most successful will Armor Core game. Mm. Did you watch any of the trailer, though, Deontay? I watched the trailer. I thought it was good. Um, I thought it, it actually like was very like flashy, and I wasn't expecting that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I really thought it was gonna be like slow. I don't know why I thought it was gonna be slow, but um, yeah, I thought it was gonna be more slower not so much like metal gear side metal gear rising <laughs> and that's what it reminded me of when i was watching it and, and it yeah. had some really cool like moments like when you're walking right next to like this large mech and i really want to understand more about the world but honestly i don't know that from software isn't the best at story so i'm not really going to get invested in saying oh this is going to be like a cool world to explore no i don't I don't think the story... They explained a little bit what the story is about. It's mm-hmm. just basically corporations fighting over resources. It's not mm-hmm. like... And it's not going to have a character that you're going to focus on. Like yeah. It's mainly the customization and like what crazy builds you can do. And mm-hmm. the boss fights seem interesting, at least. Because, uh, yeah. like... Armor Core didn't really have, like, bosses in, in the old games. They had, like, some, like, scripted, like, bosses type things. Mm-hmm. Um, but it seems like they're actually more like Souls bosses, you know, where you can lock onto them and, and fight them and stuff like that. So, yeah, no, I think it's going to, I think, I think it's definitely a different pace for any farm software fan. So if they're interested, I think that, that, that alone, like I said, it's all about goodwill and building up that goodwill. They probably follow them anyway. Like people follow to second row and people are going to probably follow to this and say, well, from software, maybe they got a goodwill behind that. And that's like mm-hmm. I said, super important. So, um, it just hopefully it's actually a game that runs well. It can it can be mediocre. It can be a bad overall like not interesting game, but at least it got to run well. At least the mechanics have to be there and solid. Um, can't just be a broken shell. So that is the yeah. key takeaway. You cannot put and out it a comes broken out shell. Very soon in uh, it's August. Like August, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So. From software is like they churn and burn like they like they did in the OVO sweatshop. So I don't know what's going on over there, for real. Um, but they've been making games and putting them out, and I don't know. I don't even know where they got the the staff to do Armor Core while someone else is doing Elden Ring, while someone else is doing Sekiro. Oh yeah, <clears throat> like, that that's one thing I'll say that I'm I'm kind of excited. The is this is the Sekiro team. Um, um, or at least like the director and the combat designer, mm-hmm. and I liked Sekiro a lot. At least I'll say it has some of the best feeling, like fluid, combat and parries. Fluid, yeah, yeah. So if they can still keep that level of quality in the combat in this game, then uh, it'll see, be really Wulong good. try to do it, and they they fail. Uh, <laughs> Wu <laughs> Wulong, maybe they 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 tried it. They tried it for real. They tried yeah. to get. They said they'll get all these these features with these mediocre combat systems. I was like, man, I just want to play Sekiro yeah. better, much better. Now we supposed to be back playing our game. Nah, that game ain't getting turned. Yeah, on. we got riff on the play though. Uh, <laughs> that that actually, like I said, the the feature set of Wulong is great. I just I know that when you said when as soon as you said I like the combat, I was like, yeah, man, well. From software actually did a really good job with creating that type of parry system because it's not like it's the first one to have a parry system but that type of parry system where it is like it's really very, fast and fluid yeah. and like it works whereas yeah. like wulong i feel like half the time it don't work half the time it's it don't do what though. i want it to do yeah the animations is janky and it's like yeah for them to get it so right with Sekiro and y'all to not get it right (laughs) it's very telling so 
no i i agree i feel like that the the, the bar system the how you know how you can build their um brake meter all that stuff worked out really well and it felt good to play in Truly, it was a game of skill because most of the time you were not trying. You you, you weren't over. You weren't going to outmaneuver it if you if you weren't really deep into the systems and you really knew how that stuff worked. And even when you tried to use them, you still had to fight. It wasn't as if you just could run away and keep doing some garbage thing. You still got to fight outside of the, yeah. the the last boss, which oh the yeah. parry wasn't an instant win. You had to yeah. like use it. And, and still learning patterns. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was like a, almost like a rhythmic game at some points. I felt like, but yeah, um, well, yeah, we could praise that all day. But I, I, I am glad that Armor Core is getting that spotlight, and it's like some new variety in these games that we're going to be playing. And um, I might still pick it up just off the simple fact that it's from software. That's like I said, I really enjoy their games, even though I say I hate Dark Souls games and Souls games, but I play them all, so um, I can't obviously hate them. Uh, but there is something to be said about good mechanics, good, good, good um, level design, uh, and and atmosphere, and all those types of things. It's like you can't Man, undersell it. These sixty dollar games be hitting. Yeah, sixty dollar games. Did you? So did you see any um yeah it's 60 dollars okay, okay um yeah 60 dollar games are better than 70 dollar games you heard it here first uh, yeah but for sure did you see any of those reports that i think it was something out of sony or something that the um 70 dollar price tag might be hurting some game sales <laughs> oh absolutely it's absolutely hurting game sales. Like nobody wants to pay almost a hundred. Um, that's that's too much. So it's absolutely hurting game sales. People are literally waiting now. They wait for a game sale drop. Like nobody is in a rush to play broken games. Like this is why this this system makes no sense. They're charging more money, but the value is in waiting and having your game be. And, and having to buy it at like half off like because at that point it's going to be finished and at that point you're going to get it for a, a discount <laughs> like like yeah. if you really want people to start buying in and the fear of missing out you have to start to make games worthy of that dollar time at, at the time of purchase like i don't feel regret even though they were 70 dollars i don't feel regret for buying horizon or god of war like I don't feel no mm -hmm. regret. I'm not gonna feel regret from for for buying Zelda, even though I know they scamming me because it's a great game. Well, to, from what I hear, it's a great game. So mm -hmm. yeah, I know that you know there's there's value the in just having. Right. Yeah, them trailers look crazy, and, and for sure, for sure, a great game. But um, but. I know that these games hold their value, and I know these games are worth it because of the goodwill and the faith of these companies that really have put the work in to make sure these games aren't coming out broken. Like, um, I would never expect Sony to do what they did with the like Last of Us and all that stuff on PC. I don't know what's happening with those ports, but they're literally falling into a category where... I would never, like, not not first day, because it seemed like none of their games worked well. I think there was originally the first one that worked well was Spider-Man, and that was it. Like, after that, everything was downhill, like, literally. Like, I don't know what's going on with their first-party exclusives being ported over, but they're porting over terribly. And I don't know if it's a different subset or what, but it seems as if to make a game, you know, work well... You gotta cut out that PC, man. <laughs> <laughs> cut out that PC, baby. That's all I can see. I mean, that PC over there cut it up over there on Red Ball. That PC cut it up on Halo Infinite. It's so, like you need to cut off the dead weight, baby. You need to go ahead and go back to exclusive games only on console. And you might just get a hit. 
<laughs> and at least some games, the PC ports are okay. They're not always the best, but they come out much later. And much so, later, you know, where they have time to actually they, make it right. Yeah, and they they focus on the system first, and then yeah. put it on PC later. So that that definitely would help a lot of these games. And which honestly, I don't mind because I'm not gonna buy the PC game day one anyway. So just yeah, delay the PC version and. Focus on your time. freaking console that you're trying to sell. That is sick. I mean, I understand Microsoft's point. They 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 pretty much got hands and pockets of everything. It doesn't matter where you go. They still got a pan in your pocket. But um, but I just feel like they're what they're trying to build is a value, and what they're doing to themselves is devaluing themselves every step of the way. That proprietary SSD is was the most was, was probably the worst idea for the box itself. Everything else is great, but the proprietary SSD is a is a fail. We all thought that Sony was gonna be was gonna be the problem. It literally is the opposite as of now, and it's probably gonna get worse and worse as we continue to move on to this to this console generation where we have to continue to get bigger and bigger games. Um, we felt as if this one was going to be the more powerful system. Sony has proven time and time again with third parties and everything that whatever they're doing to vet their games to make sure they run well on their system, they are not playing those games or at least making sure that when they when people provide them code or whatever the case may be, their dev kits, whatever they're doing, it is running better on their systems, even on paper. Even though on paper, this is supposed to be the more better console. So... It's time and time again being proven that if you are a gamer, <laughs> go with the PlayStation. Like, if you are truly a gamer, go with the PlayStation. Uh, Game Pass is worth it, but they are giving that away to X to. They're giving that away to PC, so you really don't need an Xbox. If you are a true gamer and a gamer's gamer. You, you you need to be on Nintendo. You need to be on PlayStation. So uh, Xbox is just an afterthought at that point. Stop making your console an afterthought. Start to get yourself in front of these other companies. That is how you're going to win. But I don't think it's about winning for them. And I don't know. I, and that's why, as I'm as I continue to oversee it, like look at it. Maybe they are interested in more so cash grabs. Maybe they are aligned with value of the of the ecosystem but not true value to the gamer maybe they are aligning well with what bethesda is putting out maybe that is their goal because it doesn't matter if you continue to have a drop decrease in console sales when you are literally just trying to get people into your ecosystem game pass is a large ecosystem thing it's not going to not going away anytime soon and it's a subscription when you are able to get rid of the fundamentally get rid of the box itself it's no longer a council war it's an ecosystem and what they truly have been doing is building their ecosystem to be far superior than playstations so when people can't afford to truly get those enhanced graphics that everybody is is having a hard time even running on these consoles that we bought and thought were going to be powerful enough this is where you really start to recoup your money where you really start to not only have the invested people subscribe but they now are purchasing their games through and they're not even owning them they don't even own a council to play them they're literally going through your subscription that is where it gets a little scary i think that is where microsoft's brain is is because they are a little bit more tech savvy than the most and they probably understand that the council generation is is not a fundamentally a great practice for a, a company they're, they need to they need to fall more into the PC world. They need to be able to have games and things like that continuously played throughout the um, forever. They don't need these games to be lost to a generation. And at some point, they're going to probably break away from the console because we're not going to be able to afford the consoles that we need to play these spectacular games. And they need to provide us a, a substitute and. That's going to be a streaming console. That's going to be these things that they, they already have in work. So um, I don't think they're stupid. 
Not, don't get me wrong. They're, they're a billion dollar company, billions and billions of dollars a company. So it's not like they're stupid. I just think that they they under they understand the vision and they may not see the the stepping blocks on how to build that because you still need games to sell it. Like regardless of what you may think, and that's probably why they bought Act One to buy Activision because they can never be shut out of anything ever again. Like. This is Activision we're talking about. They have the leverage to stop people from being able to play the biggest game in the world, which is Call of Duty. I don't think they're going to be, I think they're going to play ball with them at that point. They got leverage to say, oh, you don't want to put your Sony exclusive on here? Oh, we ain't going to get, no more, no more Overwatch. <laughs> no, more, no more of this, no more of that. It's like, I feel like they're, they're just building all the blocks right now to become the conglomerate to be able to, if you're throwing if you're, you're throwing stones at my um, China wall, you're, you're like the Great Wall of China. Like, there's nothing that you can do yeah. to penetrate this because at this point we're too big. You cannot yeah. and not they, play ball. They so, want it to be the Netflix of video games, and they have the infrastructure yeah. for it. And if they have the content, and really like people will still buy Playstations, but if eighty percent of all the other games are on Xbox, then you they play ball. win by default. <laughs> they win by default. Yeah. So, and that's yeah. why I think they're pushing for these acquisitions, and I think they're they're ready to. They just dropped the wallet because they don't. They, I've, I've, I've come to terms that they've realized that they can't beat them at their own game. So, mm-hmm. um, you gonna beat them at the business game? <laughs> yeah, they gotta beat them at the business game. So this is a different game they're playing. They have to have the backing of our company. They already got like my, um, Sony's uh, cloud gaming systems already running on their end. They, they're going to be the leaders in, a lot, in that stuff for a long time. X Cloud is already in Game Pass. There's plenty of things that we know that they do that are business savvy. Um, it just worries me because if you, if as you continue to deteriorate, deteriorate the, the 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 meaning of innovation what does that say you know like they don't want to innovate they don't want to be better they don't want to do things in like a a special way they just want to buy everything they want to own everything and they just want to give you the best walk it's like walmart like you're gonna just put out a bunch of small popping shops with the actual love and care in their design and you got me rooting for Nintendo. Like, I, what? Come on. I, they, they they so archaic and, and they do things so poorly, but they are at least about games. They're not about business. So that's what makes me they're like. for sure not about business. <laughs> they're not about business. They are about characters, loving characters, and, and really bringing fruition the, the next generation of characters. They are that type of company. And that is what you grow on. That's what you grow up on. And that is what you value moving forward. I, I feel like Xbox is in a, in, in a space where they are okay with probably Halo never being existing after Halo Infinite. I don't, I, I think it's a large enough IP to continue to move on, but they're not in the space where if they drop a soup, all these bad Super Mario games to, that nobody cares because the Super Mario we know was still fun and great you know they're not in the state of that of like just continuously churning and burning things because they don't even understand the value of the character they don't understand the value of those things they just know money and that's i don't know if it feels the right guy i don't know i don't know if phil is making these types of weird decisions i know that these decisions are being made but is it truly phil um i don't know that's that's rare. I mean, I you know I'm, I'm more. I, I always think of from the business angle, and I think that business angle is truly buy everything so that we become the biggest player on the block, and you gotta play ball with us. So, and that's what I think gonna happen. At some point, we're gonna see God of War on, uh, on Xbox <laughs> 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 in some way, shape, or form, uh, and they gonna have to play ball, and that's it. Like, like, if we can't beat you, we just buy your games. And we're not going to buy you, yeah. but we're going to buy everything around you till you got to help, till you got to work with us. Yeah, we already so. know that they um they wanted to have uh, Game Pass on PlayStation, and Sony said no. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
So, so they 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 playing a different game now. Yeah, they, 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 that is why they're at, Sony is doing so much to stop that. Which I mean, they might succeed in some areas. They not it's not like they're gonna they're gonna pull out the UK. Um, but it, there is value in understanding the business ethic, business. Uh, well, I can't say the word now. Etiquette. Well, etiquette. Yeah, mm -hmm. business etiquette. You is is a value in understanding it because you you kind of can map out their next move. My next move to them to me is them to continue with the Activision acquisition. Uh, hopefully, it's not to the damage of how we're going to pull out the UK market because that's a big market to pull out of. That's kind of a little risky. Um, but they're going to still push for that. Um, and they're still going to continue. And I don't think Activision is the last one. I think it's going to be like one more big, one more big one. Um, and it might be EA in itself. Yeah. And, and then they're really like, you know, who out there? Ubisoft. I, I don't think they can afford yeah. to buy Ubisoft, but they can, no, I don't think they can afford to buy C EA. You think Ubisoft worth it? <laughs> I don't 20 think... billion for Ubisoft? <laughs> nah. I don't know. That's definitely not. Are they bigger nah. than Bethesda, but not as big as um, uh, what's the name? So they, what? they're somewhere between seven and seventy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think EA is bigger for sure because of all the sports games. Um, Ubisoft more so would be the next target, but honestly, I don't think that moves the needle for them. I think EA would be the one that moves the needle for them. Ubisoft, everybody, Arab Ubisoft has been passed around from every every which way and shape or form. You play us everywhere. Um, <laughs> there's no. They well, don't, we know that they want to be bought. So. Yeah, they. I mean, they play ball with Stadia and they put all their games on there. Like Ubisoft is not. It's like they 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 put it out, but nobody wants. So um, you gotta yeah. you gotta think about the ones that really aren't up for sale but would be worthwhile for them to own apex legends owning uh the star wars ip owning pretty much in, like the massive ones that was it will, will literally cripple sony to the point where they re really only have like um a few games themselves to really back off of and in every time they and being nervous that every time a game comes out, is it going to be exclusive to the Xbox? Because they can cherry pick at that point, and um, and if you're not playing ball, that can that can really get ugly. So it's really like, um, and I don't I don't know because of all this pushback that um, that they're doing doing for Activision, which is again a seventy billion dollar acquisition. I don't think they're going to ever be able to do another one soon for a very long time um so we'll see but that's pretty much it i did not want this to go this long so we're going to stop it here uh i want to thank you guys for listening as always if you enjoyed the uh informative conversation the back and forth the dialogue don't forget to like us on your podcasting platform um, i'm putting these up on youtube now so these might be a delay a day on youtube but um, I am putting them up there as well. So thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for um, joining. And we will talk to you all next time. Peace.